So this is, super, first of all, super bright. Hopefully the settings are okay. We can't see the screen. Sort of monumental. First test bench is going into the new office. This is the first ever real test bench that I bought. So this goes in the office first. And this is our secondary bench for GPU and CPU testing. Uh, we also have, as we'll show from another shot from the inside of the car, we have a car full of GPUs and, uh, and some motherboards that are defective. So that's what we've got to work with right now. Before that, this video is brought to you by NZXT's new H500 case, which we recently found to have an impressively effective cooling setup that is entirely negative pressure when stock. The H500 is the successor of the S340 and S340 Elite, offering high build quality that's all steel and glass, and kale management features that are also top class for this $70 compact mid-tower case. The H500 is a part of NZXT's new H-Series lineup, which also features options for mini ITX, micro ATX, and full ATX builds. Learn more at the link in the description below. First test bench. First, first, I'm first, the first commenter. Well, we're, we're sitting in the world's most ergonomically amazing chair to make custom length patch cables. Not an ad, bought the chair myself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even know what the brand is. <laughs> yeah, we're just making custom length patch cables to go from the patch panel to the data switch. And uh, then we got a couple of wall wall ones as well. And uh, then as soon as this gets done, we'll move on and uh, play with that, which is much fun. That's the, the new power supply testing setup. Yeah. Which I'm sure was in a video at some point. Yes. And um, now we're gonna develop testing methodology. Should be amazing. Yes, gotta figure out how to use it and what we're gonna test, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that'll take a bit. Stone's gonna work on most of that. Uh, what are the, let's run through the stuff you have on the table for your, your cable making. So you have a bunch of short patch cables. Yeah. And then you've got just some cable cutters. <laughs> yeah, diagonal cutters. And that, that's just um, to, I went, once I get my wire to the right order, I'm using TIA EIA 568B. I just kind of measure it off, stick this guy like that, and then they all cut to the same length. Nice. Just boom, done. And then double check your order, orange, white, orange, uh, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. And if you know it's all good, just kind of slide it in the connector and make sure it stays in order. And then just before you seal it up, you check one last time. Cause again, you know, why well, have to do it twice? And then wedge and jam, make sure you can see all the little tips of the copper wires and make sure that the uh, blue piece is under the crush wedge. And then this guy. Yeah, so what is it? This clamps it down, That's right? the crimping tool, yeah. So you just slide the RJ45 in, push in as you're doing it, and then just pressure it down. Nice. Now you have a good to go cable in the stack. And then just all the headers right here. Mm -hmm. And fluke and tester you were using earlier. Yes, to test the cable. And for all of those people that are looking at those little RJ45 ends going, oh my gosh, those are not the exact right ones. We are going to bandwidth test. And if we don't get good enough bandwidth, we'll remake them. And we, we, we'll get good enough bandwidth. Yeah, It'll be fine. Our initial testing showed us that we would get good enough bandwidth. Yeah, we were getting 1.1 gigabytes per second, and that was... Uh, with the same equipment. That was with the same equipment, and that's basically 10 gigabits. It's pretty damn close. Yeah. So who cares? So this is our... Uh, it's really just to move the tripod more easily, but it does say tripod dolly. Keegan has taken to assigning it a name, but he's not here, so we can't tell you what it is. Oh, oh, so you pull with that. Okay, I got you. So what is it? How does it look? We have a ton of fans. Um, Keegan tried to organize them, uh, yes, no, day before yesterday, and, uh, we actually had too many to fit on one shelf or two shelves or, yeah, so it's a problem of depth. <laughs> it's a problem of depth. 
Um, we can put all the fans on these shelves, but then we can't actually get to them um, because these shelves right here, we have to reach all the way back in there. So this is the shelf formerly from the set room um, that had some graphics cards and Nintendo figures on it. Um, and we're going to see if we can fit a bunch of fans on here. Uh, mostly like this. This We also can't really see the labels if we stack them like this, but we'll play around with it. Um, and we have boxes for a lot of them too. So maybe we'll be able to fit them all. Maybe not. Uh, the wheels don't work. They're broken. We're gonna test the wheels on the light tripods. Works really well. Uh, I think you're supposed to, oh, maybe like, maybe like this. Oh, these are awesome. I'm trying to keep the 140s and 120s on uh, separate shelves at least. Uh, they aren't very well organized, like that's 120, uh, 120, 140, 120 so far. Um, but I think as long as we keep each shelf uh, with one size. So we have a billion of these. Leonly Bora fans that don't even have standard fan connectors on them. And a bunch of 180 and 200 milliliter fans that will probably not go on the shelf. But I think we can fit all the rest of these. Hey everyone, we're here in the Gamers Nexus nuclear fallout bunker. Keegan innovated it out of a fear of earthquakes because they're very common here. Isn't that right, Keegan? All right, so we moved the lights into the studio space. We did our audio testing there. You're gonna have to do it again once we add this in. So this comes down now. I'll be working with Keegan and Patrick. To start with, Andrew will join us in a bit after we get some footage. This is gonna be a pain in the ass. Basically, I have to remove everything off of it. Kind of vaguely remember where it is. Not that important, though. And then I numbered the panels. And then we're gonna have to pull the panels off the wood support beam which some of these beams were like cracking when I put the screws in, so we'll see if they survive. So yeah, wall comes down now, and I guess if one of my team members will exit their nuclear fallout bunker, <laughs> we can, uh, ow, that hurt the poster. We can start putting some of this stuff in, I guess just these bins to start with. So all the other crap on the table can stay on the table for now. You don't need a fancy high-tech stud finder when your studs are made out of metal. <laughs> I guess that's one advantage. Well, it won't stick right here. It, I mean, like, I can feel it, but if I let it go, it'll drop mostly, but it sticks really strongly. Like, right here, it sticks really well, and then it'll be, like, kind of light, and then really strongly right there. And then really strongly right where Steve was drilling. Yes. My method of determining whether or not it was a metal stud was to drill into the wall and see if a uh, screw went into it. And it did not. And then Patrick stuck a magnet to it. So problem here, <laughs> problem here is, uh, I mean, fortunately these are easy to patch up. Still very annoying and a waste of time, but... Uh, and also they're loaded onto the floor intentionally to reduce the amount of effort. But the problem here is that we aren't gonna be able to mount the wall the way we wanted to into metal. So I have to look at look at what my options are at this point. Other than a bunch of drywall screws or something like that. Okay, so the walls, outer walls are one hour firewalls. Inner walls, although not firewalls, are steel frames. And so we're thinking that wall is almost certainly a steel frame as well, which means we can't mount the pegboard to it. Uh, 
So at least not the way we wanted to, which was into wood studs. So we need to find another solution because it's kind of a, an important thing for the set right now. And it can't, can't take the wood screw approach and apply it to screwing into steel. And it's definitely steel because Patrick ran a magnet on it and it sticks. So there's not wood in there. So I don't know, we gotta figure out a solution. So this is the wood frame, so the frame for the tool board. Except with the wrong number of beams, but that's fine. So I think we can run two beams down to the floor on either side and just screw them in. Yes. And then probably something beam there. And then to support it properly, boom, boom. This is a side and then, view. Yeah, side profile view. Yep. So we've got our front profile. These will support it. Uh, one piece of wood on either side so it doesn't tip or fall or whatever. And that should hold it up. Yeah, if we wanted to be fancy, we could put wheels on it. But I think we'll probably just take the get it done approach first. Yeah, if we really want put to. Put wheels on later. We can run... Um, I think two people could lift that thing anyway. Two people could lift it, but we could run, um, we could just glue or uh, uh, stick some carpet, like. Yeah, uh, so it slides. Yeah, so it slides, just like fix it in uh, yeah. reversed on the bottom. Right. And it would slide around wherever we wanted. And that would be easy, like if you were here alone and wanted to shoot, or yes. we wanted to set up without you. All right. So that'll hold it up. It'll be um, further away from the wall, which is not thrilling, but we would also be able to move it if we're not crazy about the shot we end up with or if we want to do something different. These two are going to be the, they're going to go up the sides from the floor and the frame that we have is going to drill into these theoretically. I feel like I need to prefix or suffix everything I say with theoretically. It's the end of day something. This one is merging several days together, but it's the most significant stuff. So first note, I'm still not wearing a lav right now. So you're not gonna have the best audio in the world. That's not because the room sounds bad. It's because I'm not wearing the mic I don't really wear. So uh, the first video that features this position will be a hardware news video. So as you'll see earlier in the video, we tried to mount this to the peg to the wall which is what we really wanted to do. Because it'd be pretty easy, just drill it into the studs and mount it up and go. And we were all approved for that and everything ready to go. Started drilling into the studs <laughs> and realized they're made out of metal, which you probably saw earlier in the video. So, which was confirmed also by Patrick taking a literal magnet and putting it against the wall and yes, they are metal. So on the same night, uh, we worked until, well, I was here till five or six in the morning, Keegan, Patrick, and Andrew, what? 2.30. 2.30. So it was, it was a late night for everyone. We worked basically all day too. And the result is we built just a quick facade wall, because here's the problem. The point isn't to do it perfectly, as I'm sure people are gonna be like, but I would have done it this way and it'd be superior. The point was to get it done. <laughs> and be fine. And it is both done and fine. So we built a facade, well, just a frame really, and mounted the existing pegboard and frame between the two 
uh, stilts or whatever that we have rolling rolling legs and these need we're gonna add a couple support beams in stuff like that but the trouble with moving a studio is that we moved everything over here and then discovered that the walls which I had been led to believe had wood studs in them actually had metal studs in them and we didn't want to do anything involving uh, mutilating metal studs because none of us are experienced with it so this was a solution that could be done pretty quickly, get us back into filming state, like immediately, because we were gonna run through our buffer of videos filmed at the house, and then there's, no, there's nothing left there. So it's not like, we can't just sit around and wait. We had to get something up immediately. And I'm really happy with it. So the height works out well, because with the uh, table positioned here, we're going to have basically a, I'm getting another table and that'll go over here at some point. So we're gonna have a, a raising lowering table on this side. We have the cobalt table back here. We've got some room for workspace and then this big table will move that way in front of the streaming set, which is also starting to shape up. Streaming set's just a workbench right now because we moved the table over to film hardware news, but the, hard, the table can move back over. That'll be our stream set. We'll have one of those like, uh, probably autonomous desk is gonna sound us one I think for over here. And that takes care of the set area. So the lights are deployed and working. All the lights in the ceiling have been replaced except for those in the far corner. Uh, these lights have been all replaced. Keegan is currently sitting at our new table. So this came in today as well. I, I mentioned uh, working until five or six in the morning. And what I didn't say yet is that I got a call at 7.58 in the morning right after I went to bed to come get this, pick this up, uh, or let them in to, to bring it in. So yeah, this is actually pretty sweet. It's not in its final position. It's gonna shift that way. The couch that I'm getting is going in here. And when this shifts over, uh, it will allow us to do some pretty cool interview setups. So the plan is to basically, AC just came on, so sorry about the audio, but the plan is to basically have the uh, engineers and guests sit down on a, an opposing side, like. If, if we kind of rotate this uh, 180 degrees, have a chair here, a chair here, we're facing kind of 45 degrees to the camera, so we can look at each other or the camera without either angle being a hard angle that feels or looks awkward. So that's really cool. It's also a nice table. The bar height is great for, uh, once we move it, the camera will go kind of that corner, shoot this direction, and then the video set will be in the background of it, which will look really cool. So. Also super comfortable and it's a good uh, kitchen table. <laughs> but not too bad on a, on the find for this one. I'm very happy with it and just need to move it to the final location. So this came in, that's news. I think that covers the kitchen area. Um, for this room, this is all stuff that needs to be inventoried still. So Patrick's been working on it. He's gotten a whole hell of a lot of it in inventoried. These are the SSDs. Uh, power supply testing is kind of getting set up now. So I don't, I don't remember which video we had Stone in or if you ever made it into that video, but I uh, set this up with him. So O-scope, Variac for voltage control from the wall voltage control so we can step it up or down. Uh, if we wanted to simulate 90 volts, like in some regions in Japan, for example, we could do that and see if power supplies blow up. We have load testers all this stuff and he's gonna stone is gonna start working on the power supply test methodology soon so i think that covers this room and so it's the case test bench i guess to set up now but that's really it we haven't made a ton of progress here yet that'll happen shortly storage is still being finalized but like everything else uh it came filled in pretty well though check out the fan system so we originally had fans on this shelf in here and Patrick will talk about it in this video, I think. It's gonna be on this one. But when he was setting it up, we kind of realized that uh, as Keegan filled this shelf with fans, it's just, it's too deep. So you end up with all this middle section where they're just completely inaccessible. And that's a huge problem for testing. Realized we have this in the background of the old set, pulled it out, spaced the shelves appropriately, and now we have an awesome bookshelf for fans that just happen to be basically exactly the right size. So yeah, that's, we've got them separated by 120, 140, 200, and so forth. And it'll make it really easy to grab fans for cases or for fan reviews and testing. Power supply is filling in, motherboard's filling in. This is all just stuff at this point, so nothing special. Then all the network equipment is still being set up. So it's a spaghetti mess of wires right now. We're not done wiring it. We have confirmed that 10 gigabit 
even when I was working. The cat sticks in the walls is working great. Speeds are good. And we're limited basically by our SD card speeds when we read off of them and onto the NAS right now. The NAS is just kind of down there on the floor for the time being. And we'll get a more permanent setup later. But uh, yeah, so router, switch, all that stuff's in here. We have the uh, Buffalo 10 gigabit switch up there. Router, other switch for one gigabit and internet. So that takes care of that. And then this room, we just have all the foam out expanding basically. So it's pretty much fully expanded at this point. We can mount it to the walls in the set room, but we're doing some active testing on uh, noise performance. So what are the acoustics like when we're in there before we put the set wall up before, and it's gotten better by the way, the Icon Reverb have largely gone away. And then we're gonna do more testing with them now up and then more testing still with the foam installed. And we can have a back-to-back ABC comparison, which will be pretty sweet for video. So you can see how the audio levels and the acoustic uh, behaviors change based on the changes we've made. Andrew's system setup, it's the only one right now. So just threw up the, an ultra wide and that monitor is probably gonna move to a thermal test bench. But yeah, so we're, we're, we're kind of up and running at this point. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for now. It's been a long while, like a week plus, two weeks more. It's, this move's been in, uh, I've been working on it for like six months now. And the actual moving part has just been obviously abusive because we've been doing work to keep making videos and get them up every single day and also move stuff and try not to miss days in between. So pretty big challenge, but it's all mostly done at this point. I just need to finalize inventory. All the other stuff is in and we're getting the set finalized, getting the acoustics finalized. So we're in good shape, but we'll have another update for you at some point. Might continue this series to, this isn't the end of the series, but we might continue it with like a GN improvement vlog as well. Anyway, that's it for now. As always, subscribe for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamers and access helps out directly with the moving expenses and just if you like our stuff, or go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up things like our new mouse pads that just came in in the last couple weeks. These are pretty sweet. So monitor woke up and made a noise. Uh, so the blue actually came out way more electric blue than our original sample, which is awesome. And the people who ordered them early and got them have been pretty happy about that. So thank you for picking it up. It's on store.gamersnexus.net. If you're interested, it has the uh, sewn border at the edges. So it, it kind of helps with preventing any fraying or anything like that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.